Welcome back, everybody. Our country has never had a player, a pair of players ranked inside the world top 50 in tennis. A few day, a few days time, though, we will. After uh, Vashik Pospisil and Milos Raonic went head to head in yesterday's Rogers Cup semifinal, Audley Brown, Vancouver Open tournament director Ryan Clark has dealt with both these players extensively over the years. First off, what did you make of yesterday's match? Well, what a great day. I mean, you talk about excitement. You went the full distance to tiebreaker in the third. Great. Showed both their talents. It shows we've got two players on very even keel, which is really good news for the future. You know, the more I interview players and the more I talk about the process of taking it to the next level and gaining experience, because you always hear it from players yeah. saying, you know what, I need that experience in that moment. Mm -hmm. How much of a benefit was Vashik winning the Autumn Brown Vancouver Open to set him up for the run that he went on in, in Montreal? I think it was massive because for a couple of reasons. One, winning on your home ground, like being here in BC, having to play on his home turf, as he even said in his inter post interviews, not easy to do because he knows all the expectation was on him and everyone was hoping he would win. He, he could feel the hope of everybody. So getting that and getting that confidence and riding that adrenaline right through the Rogers Cup was big. Are we seeing now the beginnings of a heated rivalry between two countrymen in Milos Raonic and Vashik Possible Soul? Absolutely. This was part one. This was part one of probably many to come, and you and you kind of knew it going into this. And Milos probably has maybe a little bit more of an advantage because he was also in Toronto. That's his home area. I'd like to see if that match was in BC, but uh, that's part one of many to come. Okay, now to see these two go head to head, and I, there wasn't a lot of affection mm -hmm. during this match or even afterwards. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good thing. That's a good thing. It means Vasek wants it, and that's good. I mean, I'm speaking from BC terms here. Okay. It means he wants to be the guy. He wants to be the number one. He's not just going to say, okay, Milos, you've been the number one guy. It's yours. No, no, no. He wants him to be number one, too. So good on him. This game evolved, and I know chatting with him the last three, four years, um, we saw him in doubles, saw him in doubles, and then I think he made it a concerted effort two, three years ago to get the singles game going, it, exactly. and we've seen it. He didn't want to be cast type, and I remember talking to him a few years ago when he was first coming up, you know, those first couple mm -hmm. of years out of juniors, it wasn't as easy for him. He wasn't getting the breakthroughs that he wanted to in singles, whereas Milos broke through quickly, and people saying, well, just be, you know, you could probably be one of the best doubles players in the world, and he said, no, I don't want to get cast type early as just a doubles guy. I'm going to stay the course, and, and again, kudos to him for staying the course and believing in himself to become the singles player. They both had goals at the start of the season. It's funny because when, when we interview them and ask them about what their goals are for the upcoming year, they, they like to keep it themselves. Yeah. Um, Vashik said during this tournament that he wanted to break through the top 70 of the world. Is there? Rankings come out, he's going to be probably 40 it looks like. Uh, Milos Ranish right now ranked 13th in the world. His goal is to be top 10. His game right now, where it's at, this step today another one of those processes to take it even higher. Yeah, this is another big one for him to win on home soil again. He'll be feeling the pressure. Everyone's going to want to win. Everyone's going to want him to win. And he's got a good look at it. You know, with his serve and his, he's not too tired out from last night. Uh, wisely, though, luckily they were the first match. So he's not going to be as tired. He's gotten more rest than Nadal has. How big was yesterday for tennis in our country? Uh, and I think the match lived up to all the hype. But in order for our country to become... I don't want to say a world power because I'm not sure if we're quite there with two you know, mm -hmm. ranked players on the men's side, but the moment yesterday to see both of them competing at where they are and where they now are. Well, it gets the mass message out that we exist. Okay. You know, we're, there, we're, we're right on the door knocking in. We're, you know, obviously, the success in Davis Cup, success on these rankings now, players coming up. It's right saying we're right at that precipice now. And with two players at uh, semifinals, though, that hadn't been seen, in, I don't think, ever at the Rogers Cup. Mm -hmm. So now people can say, yeah, every time a big tournament comes up, yeah, we expect Canadians to be there. Are we seeing a reemergence in Rafael Nadal's game? Uh, he's played very well in his comeback. S surprising. Surprising, actually. I thought, you know, with his knees on the hard courts, it would be surprising if he'd get through. We'll find out if it carries through to the U.S. Open. He's still got another big tournament in Cincinnati and then U.S. Open, so we'll see if the knees hold up. But so far, so good for him. What does Milos Ronich have to do today? Or what does he have to prove to himself against this match against Rafa? Because we've mentioned all morning long, he's 0 for 3. What do we need to see from him today, win or lose in this match? Take charge. Become, you know, he can decide whether the win, whether he wins the match or not. Don't let Nadal move you around side to side. If this becomes a running race, Nadal will run away with it. Milos needs to use his big serves and big shots and make Rafael move side to side. We've mapped our way, I think, quite well in the last year or two years with Davis Cup. Mm -hmm. People starting to look at Canada on the world stage now saying no longer pushover. Um, mm -hmm. We can no longer bring our B squad like we saw with Italy? Yeah, you can't bring the B squad. You've got to bring the A squads and people are going to know that now. It's, it's there. The rankings show it. The results show it. 
were there. And that's, you know, just good years of years of good work leading up. You know, this didn't just come overnight. This is just years of building the platforms up through the years. Okay, I'm going to put you on the spot. Who wins today's match, Milos or Rafael Nadal? Milos in three. Wow. In three. I think because he had, smartly, they scheduled him to be the afternoon match, whereas Nadal played the night match, and they went three sets, so he's had a little bit less rest than uh, Milos. So luckily... Yeah, a little rest. Always appreciate it. Uh, Lynn, who knows? Fingers crossed. Maybe we hear it here first, courtesy of Ryan Clark. <laughs> Very nice. Thanks, Ryan. I like that. I like that, too. Do you hear that? Just heard some thunder. Mm -hmm. Loud, loud.